In this video, I'll be explaining and demonstrating a couple variations of the median nerve glide. You should consider giving a median nerve glide for any patient with any of the following presentations. Number one is kind of obvious, adverse neurodynamics of the median nerve. Now, adverse neurodynamics is a very general umbrella term. It's not very specific, but in general, any patient who has a positive result on the median nerve tension test should probably be given a median nerve glide. Any patient with post-concussion syndrome, so mild traumatic brain injuries, oftentimes after the initial concussion or injury, the patient will develop adverse neurodynamics in all three of the upper extremity nerves, so median nerve, ulnar nerve, and radial nerve. Any patient with numbness or paresthesias in the median nerve distribution of the hand. Patients with median nerve entrapment, and remember there's multiple entrapment sites, but some of the common ones would be carpal tunnel syndrome, pronator teri syndrome, anterior interosseous nerve entrapment. Patients with a cervical radiculopathy and those with thoracic outlet syndrome. To perform the median nerve glide, the patient will be positioned either in sitting or standing. And if you're the patient, you're going to bring your shoulder into some amount of shoulder abduction with your elbows straight and palms facing upward. So just bringing the arm up, that's the shoulder abduction, out to the side. Elbow is straight and the palm is facing upward. Now the starting position is going to be with your head tilted toward your hand and your wrist extended. So there my wrist is extended and my head is tilted towards my hand. This is position one. Now from here, you're going to flex your wrist while keeping the elbow straight so elbow doesn't move. Flex the wrist and tilt your head away from your hand. And these should be done at the same time. So this is position two. And really the median nerve glide is just an oscillation between these two positions. So here's position one. There's position two. And you just go back and forth holding about one to two seconds in each position and you're gonna perform about 15 total repetitions per set. If the elbow bends slightly, that's okay. You just want most of the motion focused between the wrist and the head. If that's too intense, you can lower the arm, as I just did there, into a little bit less abduction. You can even perform it with the arm at the side. Here's the second form of the median nerve glide. Right here is position one. It's pretty much the same as what we saw before. Shoulder abducted, elbow extended, wrist slightly extended, and head tilted toward the hand. But now the movement will not occur at the wrist. The movement will actually occur at the elbow. So between the elbow and the head. So this is position one. Now I'm gonna move into position two. So instead of the wrist moving, now it's the elbow. So the elbow flexes and my head tilts away from my hand, or I could think of away from my elbow. This is position two. And so from here, we're just gonna oscillate between position one and position two. So this is the second form of the median nerve glide. Dosage would be exactly the same. Again, if this is too intense, you can lower the arm so it's in less abduction, just like we saw with the previous form of the median nerve glide and always follow this model. Test, treat, retest. If you determined that somebody had adverse neurodynamics of the median nerve via the median nerve tension test, well then after you give the median nerve glides, you should retest with the median nerve tension test. Thank you. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. 